Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Joint Information Center briefing for Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. Next slide. Here are your administrative notes. Our unified command team. Joint Operations Center lines of effort and priorities. Purpose of the Joint Information Center or JIC. And our agenda for today. Coming up first on our agenda, with well, the current situation report is Health Department, Eric Pessel. Eric, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Derek. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so just a, a kind of a, a background report on where we're currently at with our numbers. Uh, as you can see, we have um, we've reached over 11,000 confirmed cases now in Calhoun County. It's another milestone we don't like to reach. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, we're there. Uh, you can also see on that right side of the graph, uh, we, we are really continuing to trend upwards. Um, maybe there's a little bit of a flattening or, or a downward. I guess we'll see more as we go on through the week, uh, the rest of this week. But um, uh, certainly it's, it's still headed, it appears, in the wrong direction. Um, and we really need to do everything in our power to at least try to slow that down or turn it around. Our total hospitalizations now since um, the pandemic is 434 of our folks have been in the hospital and we're at uh, 246 deaths. Next slide. So a little bit of follow-up on our vaccines and where we're currently at in Calhoun County. You can see our trend line. Um, almost 30% of our um, Calhoun County citizens have been uh, fully complete uh, vaccine and uh, just about 40% have had at least one shot. Remember our goal is 70% and uh, we're gonna talk in a slide later, a little bit, of, uh, a little bit later on uh, where we're, what we're seeing in our current uh, vaccine clinics. Um, but as you can see, uh, according to the state's dashboard, um, we've now administered a, a total of 71,972 doses in Calhoun County and the health department has administered almost 34,000 of those. Next slide. So every now and then, or at least recently, I've been getting uh, questions from several different uh, uh, agencies and, um, and, and folks in the school districts on um, you know, questioning why uh, Ohio, Indiana, sometimes I hear, even Illinois, um, why they don't have as bad a problem as Michigan uh, when, and they're more open is the, is the term I hear. And so this is just a, a simple graph off of the CDC's uh, website that shows our case rates per 100,000 since the beginning of the pandemic. And you can see Michigan is the, um, is the, the bottom line, I guess. I'm, I'm a little colorblind, but I think it would be purple. Uh, Ohio is green and uh, Indiana is blue. And you can see, uh, based on the case rate, cases per 100,000, uh, Michigan, for the most part, has done as good as Ohio and a lot much better than Indiana throughout the pandemic. And uh, right about December 11th, as you can see on the screen, um, we started to actually do even better than Ohio. And unfortunately, as you can see, our latest surge that we've had here in Michigan, we're about ready to catch back up to them. And that's that's unfortunate because we were actually heading in a very good direction, and um, and you know, and th there's obviously many different reasons for that. But I just think that this is a good graph to show people that that like to compare without data or without knowledge of what's actually going on. That actually some of our other Great Lakes states have have actually struggled even worse than Michigan. Uh, next slide. Uh, a little update on quarantine. Uh, we sent this out to our school districts this week. Um, uh, back in, uh, I think it was about two weeks ago now, the state of Michigan changed their, uh, their quarantine um, guidance. Uh, that back in December, they had changed it from 14 days back down to 10. Um, 
here two weeks ago, we went back up to a 14 day quarantine uh, and basically doing that for a variety of reasons. One, uh, the, the guidance for the variant and, and when we were seeing the variant, the B117, um, the guidance was to go 14 days and we're starting to see so much of the B117. It just made sense both in Calhoun and across the state of Michigan that we should just be quarantining for 14 days. Um, it appears the variant, um, <clears throat> you are infectious longer um, with, the, with the variant. And, and so it just made sense for us to do that. Um, and uh, you can see in the second bullet there, kind of our reasoning um, behind that. Next slide. And I want to talk a little bit about clinics. So we are starting to um, see a situation where we're not uh, filling all of the uh, slots for our for our vaccination clinics. Um, so starting, I think um, last week or maybe even the week before, we started to open up to walk-in traffic. So not only do you have the ability to schedule through our uh, online system to get um, you know a scheduled appointment, you also can just simply walk in. And uh, uh, today, we have a walk-in clinic at the Y Multi-Sports Complex. Um, there's some scheduled appointments, but if anybody wants to go, go down and get their, uh, get their vaccine, they can do that today from 2 to 7 p.m. for walk-ins. Uh, Friday, we're going to be back at the YMCA Multi-Sports Complex for walk-ins from 9 to 2. You can also have an appointment if that's uh, better for you. Saturday, we're going to be out at the county fairgrounds. We're going to do a drive-through, so you don't even have to get out of your car. Uh, we have one of the barns out there that we're going to drive uh, vehicles through in two different uh, lines, and we'll be able to get you vaccinated and, uh, and on your way. Next week, Wednesday, we're going to be at Harper Creek High School um, to uh, pick up, hopefully, our school districts that are, um, that are around the Battle Creek area. And it's open to the public from 3 to 7 p.m. It's going to be a drive-through, uh, similar to the fairgrounds, only we'll have tents set up at the Harper Creek High School parking lot. And you'll be able to drive through and then uh, move on to get uh, observation, and then you'll be able to be on your way. You don't even have to get out of your car. And then uh, next Thursday, the same thing. We're going to be at the Kellogg Community College uh, North parking lot. That's the very large parking lot there next to their sports complex. And same thing, we're gonna be doing a drive-through there um, from three to 7 p.m. And we're hoping to pick up, uh, again, we're offering this uh, for all of our school-aged uh, 16 and up age kids to come on down and get vaccinated, and as well as the general public. Our focus in these three, uh, both the fairgrounds this weekend, Harper Creek and Kellogg though, is really for our schools um, to, get our, uh, to get the kids that are willing to get vaccinated out there and I just think there's a lot of good reasons for it. I'm not the least of which, if you're an athlete, if you get vaccinated, then you uh, would not need to quarantine if you were exposed. Uh, I know that there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of media attention there at the end of winter sports where we were seeing teams that had to forfeit or had to miss their districts or regionals or maybe a wrestler had to miss a, a state wrestling meet. And uh, for vaccinated, and you're exposed, you don't need to quarantine. So that would be another reason why we'd want our kids to get down there and get vaccinated. And with that, Dirk, I think that's the end of my report. Okay, very good. Eric Pessel, thank you so much for your report. We appreciate it. Moving on next, we're COVID-19 PSA phase two report. One of our PIOs, Lucy Blair. Go ahead, Lucy. Thanks, Dirk. I am excited to share with everyone phase two of a countywide regional PSA that we've done with some local partners. Um, we released phase one earlier this year and phase two um, is similar in look and feel, but this really encourages folks to get their vaccine. The idea with all of these assets, we have a whole bunch of social media assets available for the partners who are a part of this, is that we really just want people to take that step. And we wanted to show folks that by working together, um, you know, it's funny because just by getting the um, shot, we're working together as a community. So that was the goal to show that in these 
um, materials. So there's a couple of different things that you'll see throughout the community as a part of this campaign. We do, like I said, we have about five or six different assets that look similar to this graphic that you have on the right of your screen. There's also a YouTube video and there's a link here. It's also being shared on Facebook. And again, that's to encourage folks to get the vaccine. It shows what the clinics look like at the YMCA and it's all local folks. And um, all of these materials are produced with, in cooperation with the hospitals. Um, all of the local hospitals, including the Albion Healthcare Alliance, um, you know, these organizations came together and they told us that they wanted a consistent message that all of us are saying together. And so that's the goal of this campaign. And um, these materials send people to calhouncountymi.gov slash COVID. Um, we have really tried to make it so that regardless of which website you're going to, whether you're going to slash COVID or slash COVID vaccine, you are able to get the information that you need. COVID, both of them will have online registration so that you can sign up if you want to um, sign up through our portals. It also has information about walk-in uh, clinics, like we mentioned, and also other locations where people can get the vaccine in Calhoun County. So all of this information is on our website. This new campaign is designed to send people to whatever information they need so that they can get the vaccine. Um, in addition to all of our partners sharing these in their various communications channels, we are also doing some advertising. So for instance, you will see billboards um, on I-94, but we're also, um, we were told today that it's actually in a lot of different counties because this is a message that, you know, there's no, there's no geographic area for this message. So um, you'll see these messages in the area and um, we're really excited to just give our partners really beautiful assets so that we can encourage our community to get vaccinated. So we wanted to share this, let you know that it exists, let you know that you'll start seeing it. And if any partners are interested in um, getting any of these assets or anything, feel free to reach out to any of the PIOs. We'd be happy to get you connected with this. And um, we're really excited to get this out into the community. And that's it for me, Dirk. Okay, very good message. Thanks, Lucy Blair. We appreciate it very much. Moving on to comments from elected officials. We'll start off with Senator Bison. Hi, this is Karen in Senator Bison's office. Nothing COVID related to report today. Thanks. Karen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Representative Hotspa. Hey, this is Paul Agnesak. Um, Representative Hodzma had to head over toward session. They had a meeting um, before session starts in about 15 minutes. So he's not able to be here. Yeah, we don't have anything anything happening COVID in Lansing right now. Their um, budgets are starting to kind of pop loose. Um, one of the interesting things is there's a push right now to move some of the departments onto quarterly budgeting. Um, the, the leadership in the House is talking about um, for certain departments, um, ag, uh, Eagle, which is the old Department of Environmental Quality, giving them a, a fourth of a budget to work with. Um, we're not really sure. We haven't seen the details on maybe how county appropriations might work or all the various programs that local governments provide, but there might be a situation where um, each quarter you've got to go back to the appropriations process and, and justify how you've spent the money and, and um, maybe add a few more bean counters to your staff to be able to justify why you should get the money you get. So hopefully that issue goes by the wayside and we get back to just budgeting a year by year basis or you know maybe two years like we used to for a short period of time but um that's really what the process is right now is is the, the appropriations um at the at the committee level so nothing nothing too soon will be happening but we're starting to get a sense of where some priorities are and obviously they're looking at how to spend the remaining money from the December appropriations, the federal appropriations that came down, but along along with that, there's the second round that came through, you know, about a month ago. Um, it's about $13 billion, I think, of federal funding that the state is sitting on and hopefully we'll get moving off to some of some of you all, hopefully to get it into the into the streets and getting getting us back on our feet after COVID. Okay. Thank you, Paul, for that report. We appreciate it. Representative Hall. Okay, county elected officials. Hearing none, we'll move on to tribal elected officials. 
moving down to city elected officials. And on to township elected officials. And finally, village elected officials. Okay, next slide, please. I want to take a chance to thank our Facebook watchers, listeners for joining us each week when you can. Our best information sources are listed on the screen. Next slide, please. We lost our contact page. Hmm. Cindy, do you have our contact page? Okay. I think we'll end it right there. I hope everybody has a great day and a safe week. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.